GM. I am Caitlin Cook, otherwise known as Dead Kate Bounce, head of marketing and comms at Hero Labs and a contributor to Hero Network. And this is The Network Effect. Well, The Network Effect with a bit of a facelift. Join me once a week as I walk through the latest updates in the Hero ecosystem, as well as the biggest macro headlines in crypto. With that, let's get to it. Starting with the U.S. markets, one of the hottest crypto words of the month, which is Bitcoin Spot ETF, a product that would put Bitcoin in the form of a traditional regulated financial product, likely opening up the floodgates for millions of dollars in investment by traditional money managers across the country who want exposure to Bitcoin price action, but have historically been spooked by a variety of factors spanning from custody, compliance and regulation to financial reporting. But what many don't know is that a Bitcoin spot ETF approval has been an ongoing battle in the U.S. since 2013 when the Winklevoss twins from Gemini filed for the first time. In the decades since, we've seen dozens of applications by some of the largest asset managers in the world, to no avail. Despite the fact that a spot ETF has long been approved in other countries and that a Bitcoin futures ETF has already received approval in the U.S., most notably, over the past month, we've seen a major uptick in spot ETF applications by industry-leading firms, leading many people to wonder what's behind the curtain and whether these firms know something that we don't. Adding fuel to the fire this week, BlackRock CEO Larry Fink discussed the transformative potential of crypto, a potential Easter egg nodding to what's to come in regard to a pending spot ETF application by BlackRock and many of its competitors. In an interview with Fox Business, Fink expressed his belief that Bitcoin's tokenization of assets could revolutionize finance. While previously skeptical, Fink now sees Bitcoin as an international asset, offering an alternative to gold and serving as a hedge against inflation and currency devaluation. Like many others, BlackRock's iShares unit has filed paperwork for a spot Bitcoin ETF with the SEC. While Fink, of course, couldn't provide a timeline for that decision, he did express hope for collaboration with regulators to get the filing approved. Fink's statements mark a notable shift in perspective and a positive development that's been seen across several leaders in the traditional asset management space, which could have major implications for crypto as a whole, even when a spot ETF application is approved. Next, more turmoil at Binance. The crypto exchange is facing a crisis as senior executives resign due to CEO CZ's handling of regulatory investigations. The departures, including general counsel, chief strategy officer, and compliance SVP, pose significant management and strategic challenges for Binance. These executives are responsible for dealing with regulators, making their departure particularly impactful. The resignations are related to CZ's response to an ongoing investigation by the U.S. Department of Justice, which alleges attempts to deceive regulators, money laundering, and sanctions violations. Binance is already facing regulatory lawsuits, and rumors suggest a potential criminal complaint. Despite market share decline and pressure from banks cutting off fiat currency access, CZ has shown no intention of stepping aside as CEO. More to come there, I'm sure. Jumping over to Canada, the Canadian House of Commons Parliamentary Standing Committee on Industry and Technology published a report that recognizes blockchain as an emerging industry with significant economic opportunities, emphasizing consumer protection and regulatory clarity, advocating for a national blockchain strategy, and even proposing an innovative regulatory approach to stablecoins. The report highlights Canada's potential to become a leader in the crypto economy. Lastly, in the United Kingdom, UK crypto and stablecoin rules have received royal assent. What does that mean? Well, the Financial Services and Markets Act of 2023, legislation that classifies crypto as a regulated financial activity, was recently approved by King Charles, marking the last stage that makes the bill into a law. The bill, which was proposed in mid-2022, includes measures that bring crypto and stablecoins into the scope of regulation. More specifically, it gives regulators more power over the financial system, with amendments added to treat all crypto as a regulated activity and to supervise crypto promotions. The bill will also bring stablecoins into the scope of payments rules. The Bank of England, UK's Treasury, 
Financial Conduct Authority and payment system regulators will soon be able to introduce and enforce rules to regulate the sector. Now in Hero Network news, starting with the numbers, total network volume now at $315,250,025, with total network 30-day average daily volume now at over $750,000. Lastly, 172,026,224 HERO tokens staked with an average stake duration of 2.2 years. The network recently launched a 40 million HERO rewards program. The program was created to incentivize early participation in HERO-powered HERO perps and futures dApps that were built using HERO's dexterity protocol, rewarding traders based on their pro rata share of daily trading volume. Notional volume of all derivatives trading activity from any wallet connected to a dexterity powered dApp, whether that's Open Hero or soon to be Flowmatic, YOLO NOLO, Oramdex, and other dApps that are in development, will be eligible to receive their pro rata share of the Epoch reward, including both maker and taker liquidity. The first Epoch is now live and will be for 240,000 ES Hero or escrowed Hero. 24 escrowed hero per $100,000 in notional volume traded. Flowmatic, an on chain trading terminal DEX hybrid powered by Hero's Dexterity Protocol, or as they like to call it, a hybrid X, blends advantages of centralized liquidity with the innovations of DeFi through its trading terminal and API. Through Flowmatic, traders will be able to use leverage to trade perpetual contracts with advanced order types, speed, and permissionless autonomy. Flowmatic has recently opened up early access to whitelisted users for a closed beta testing period among select group. The team has also received requests to build its API for other projects. In other words, soon other projects will have the ability to route their orders through Flowmatic. Plenty more to come there. Next, YOLO NOLO is ushering in a new era in text-based trading. The hero-powered bot that allows users to trade paramutuals on the price of Bitcoin natively in their favorite Discord communities has announced the upcoming launch of NOLO Perps. Powered by Hero's Dexterity Protocol, the new bot will allow users to trade perpetual futures directly in Discord. Lastly, mark your calendars because Network co-founder Dan Gunsberg is going live on the Hero Network Twitter on Tuesday, July 11th at 1 p.m. Eastern for an ecosystem town hall. Featuring Hero Nation builders from Flowmatic, YOLO NOLO, Psy Options, and more. As a teaser, be sure to look out for a spicy new DAP announcement powered by Hero Dexterity Protocol leading up to that town hall. Plenty of exciting developments to cover and alpha drops guaranteed. That's all for this week, so be sure to jump into the pit in the Hero Nation Discord for the latest on all things Hero, altcoins, and more. And of course, follow along on Twitter at the handle Hero Network as well.